Hi, ladies. I am going to uh, mute you all. And wait for everybody else to come in. It is just 7.15 now, so we're going to give it a few minutes. Everybody having a good week so far? Good. Okay, another two minutes and then we'll get started.
Okay, I'm going to give it another minute and then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so I always start with a little bit of housekeeping and then I will get into our meeting. Topic is restaurants, eating at restaurants, giving you guys ideas of what you could eat at certain types of restaurants, how you can manage tracking at restaurants. Because I know um, a lot of people, um, you know, eat out. So we're going to talk about that. But before we do, a couple of things housekeeping. This session ends on. Friday, uh, where is it? The 12th. And the new session starts the 15th. Um, I've already received some people's payments. Some people tell me they're going to do it. Uh, it's about three weeks away. So I need to know if you're staying on or if you're going on maintenance or if you're taking a break just so I know how many more people I can bring in with the new session. Also, I've had a, a bunch of people refer people. Awesome. They're asking and saying, well, I was told they can come in now. I don't let anybody in um, this late in the game because they're going to be lost. They'll have no clue what they're doing. I can't coach them privately. I have private clients, but I charge them way more money than I do when you're in the Shred Tribe in the group. So um, I try to let them know, you know, you're going to get put in the app on May 5th. So if you have anyone that wants to join new, I put them in, you know, in the private group on May 5th. So I can do all the private coaching that I do with the new group. Do you guys remember that where I would do your zoom meetings and all that stuff, and you didn't see anybody else until we actually started. So that will be May 5th. So they get an extra 10 days on their eight weeks. Um, if you refer somebody, you get $10 and they get $10 off the first referral time. Um, unless I give you a special pricing because of Orange Theory or whatever the case is. Um, but please don't tell anybody that I will put them in immediately because I won't. And somebody got upset with me and I feel bad, but unfortunately I just can't, I can't do it. It would, I would lose my mind. So I don't do that. Um, second thing is I've been getting a bunch of messages. I had hats for the longest time and they're all sold out. I don't have any more. I can't sell the one that I wear. Um, so there are no more. I don't know if I'll be ordering them because it took me a while to get everybody, you know, to, to sell them all. And then that's, I have to keep that stock. So as of right now, I do not have any more hats. Um, I think Ada, were you the last one to get one? Did you get a hat? No, can't remember who it was, but somebody got the last hat. Um, oh, Jackie, Jackie got the last hat. If I do decide to order them again, I will let you guys all know. Um, people are asking me about the old style where it said Shannon Shred Tribe tank tops. I do have some of those left. Message me. They're different sizes. I'm not sure what they are. And I think I have three of the um, what doesn't challenge you won't change you tank tops. The next session, I'll be ordering different tank tops. So you can't get, they're only limited edition. I will never order them again. When they're done, they're done. And then my printer does another set of 25 tank tops for me, a different saying. So um, if you are interested in any of those, please let me know. Remember, there's no more baseball caps. Um, okay, let me let these people in. We are still doing the step challenge. Please keep posting your steps. I will be asking you for the total on May 12th of what you accumulated. If you tracked every single day and posted your steps, not tracked your food, but posted your steps every day in the group, you get $10 credit off of your next session. But I won't know that. So I'll just memo you back or sell you back the $10 if you've already paid for it and then you get it. I have no problem with that. 
Um, it's Christmas in May, which I do every year. So you can buy two sessions, get the third half off. You pay for it all up front. Um, and that covers you for the next 24 weeks, starting with the May. And I do that in May because they do Christmas in May all the time. So I try to do Christmas in May. Um, I think that's it. I am doing a special. I was um, approached by someone with Palm Beach County Schools. And they asked me if I would do a schools out, summers in eight week session for teachers and school admins. Um, so you guys that are already in here, you don't need to do it, but I'm gonna do a special one that's gonna start in June. Um, so if you know anybody that doesn't wanna start in May and they wanna wait because they do work for the school, have them reach out to me, give, just give them my number or whatever. Um, but I have a flyer being made because that teacher is sending it out to everybody that she knows she asked me to do it. So um, she's in the regular session, but she's doing it for the teachers. Um, I think that's all I have for housekeeping. Pretty sure. People have been asking me a lot about my lips. Um, one is healing, had a biopsy on the other side yesterday. I'll get the results back in a week. Um, definitely a lot smaller than this side. So it should be nothing. I'm not worried about it or anything. So I'll keep you guys all posted. I will not be able to have that session that Wednesday night, obviously, because my doctor only does the procedure on Wednesdays, but I will let you know when that is. I'm going with that it is a basal cell, that it is cancer because it's exactly the same as the other one. So I'm just anticipating and letting you guys know ahead of time that we won't have the meeting that Wednesday, but I'll let you know when that is. Um, boot camp is still every Sunday at 8 a.m. We have a couple of baddies that have been coming. Uh, Lori, Ada kicked butt last week. Lori wasn't there last week, but she's been coming pretty much every week. Ada started this past week. She kicked butt. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to come. If you want more information on that, let me know. I'm only taking 15 people, and we've been around 12 every week. So there's not really been very much more space for that. Okay, moving on. How many of you guys go out for dinner somewhere? How many of you are like, fudge, you thought I was going to say a bad word, fudge, I don't want to go out for dinner because I don't know what to eat. Maybe not now, but maybe you did it when you started. Because like Cheryl, you raised your hand, but I know that you're a badass tracker. So you really know what to do. But um, how many of you get overwhelmed when someone says, hey, you want to go get lunch? Hey, you want to go to a sweet 16? Hey, we have a wedding coming up in three months. Now the anxiety starts three months before, right? Um, remember, first and foremost, you are not on a diet. So don't restrict yourselves. You don't want to have this program ruin your social life. That's not the point of it, right? You don't have to be that person that says, oh, I'm just going to have a salad. Oh, I ate before I came. I'm just going to have water. Everybody's be like, no, why? Why are you on a diet? Blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Go out, enjoy your food, do what you normally do. Um, I go out for dinner every Friday night, every Saturday night, and on Sundays, we usually order in. When we order in, I don't usually order Micah's pizza, and I just make something that I have in the house. But we are very social people. We go out all the time. People that know me know that I, we are always out and doing something, not on my wants. I would stay home and be a homebody every day if I could but I don't have that choice. I'm a very um, introverted extrovert. How many of you are introverted extroverts? Like you can be around people, but you really want to be home. That's me, 100%. Um, I can live in my house and never leave. Quarantine was my favorite time ever in my entire life. Okay, but I love people and I love doing things and I love coaching, but it's really weird. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about, should you track, should you estimate, should you just put tracking away for the day because of what's going on? Um, I'm going to give you some restaurant trips and tips and tricks. Um, I made a whole bunch of notes. I mean, I've been putting this together. So we're going to start with the best nutrition plan is the one that you stick to, right? But it depends on what your goals are, how closely you need to stick with it when you are going out for dinner or when you're going to an event. And there's ways that you can stick to it and not really worry too much. And I had given Lori an idea. Um, she had a bar mitzvah to go to. Um, but 
the when you're on this is one of the best nutrition plans by the way because there's no restriction you could have whatever you want as long as it fits in your daily budget now let's say you have 150 carbs for the day and you know you're going to a party that night and you lo- you know you want a piece of cake and you know you want to have some chips and salsa you know you're going to want to have a couple of drinks save those carbs till the end of the day eat your proteins all day long your body doesn't know at the end of the day what time you actually ate all that food as long as you get it all in i mean there are people that do fasting 20-4 and they eat all let's say 1800 calories in 4 hours because that's their feeding window. So if you need to hoard, and I hate using that word, but it is a real word. If you need to hoard your carbs till the end of the day, then do it. I do it all the time. I did it more when I drank because I knew I wanted to drink wine and stuff at the end of the day. Now I can eat it more so because I don't drink anymore, but you can definitely do that. I don't want you doing that and saving it from like Wednesday and Thursday for Saturday. That becomes a really bad habit and that starts a really bad cycle. So you don't want to do that. But for in the morning, just know that you're going to eat egg whites. You're going to eat turkey breast. You're going to eat chicken. You're going to eat tuna. Still eat. and You need to eat all day long. Don't starve yourself because your metabolism will crash. But save carbs for the end of the day for whatever you're doing. It could be brunch, whatever it is you're doing. Um, If it's avocado toast, you know what you want to have because you're going to brunch. Save some fats. Everybody now has been in here five weeks. You have an idea, not everybody, some started my mini shred, but you have an idea now of what is what, what's a carb, what's a fat, what's a protein, whereas you might not have known that in the beginning. Um, And a lot of it's an, an awakening of, oh my God, I had no idea how much this cost me as far as cost, meaning your budget of your calories or your protein, carbs, and fats. Um, Okay. So here comes the restaurants. So Should you precisely track every single thing you eat in a restaurant? Is anybody here doing a body body show competition, body building competition? No, right? Is anybody here planning on doing one in the next three months, 12 weeks out? No. That being said, you do not have to precisely track when you're at a restaurant. You have forgiveness. I give you guys at least 10 carbs and 10 proteins over and under for that forgiveness also. Um, So if you need to reach your goals ASAP, I'm getting married next week, but I have my bachelorette party, what should I do? I always tell everybody just enjoy yourself and then it'll turn my back off. But then yes, precisely track if you have no room in your wedding dress and you're getting married. Like you don't have that ability. Um, But with practice, Eventually, you can put your tracker away when you go out to a restaurant and not worry about it so much, unless you have a show you're competing in. That's the only reason why you would have to precisely track. I don't precisely track. When people go out with me, they're like, what'd you put in your tracker? Because I do track. So I'll pull my phone, I'll start putting in there like, what'd you put in? And I'll say this, this, but that doesn't sound right. Or that doesn't look exact. It might not be. But nobody's perfect. And at least you're tracking and you have an idea of what you had to eat. Now, come Monday, if I gain weight, I know I went out and maybe my 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 thoughts weren't what it was. So the next time I do that meal, maybe I will look ahead of time. And I'm going to get into that too. Um, so unless you're competing in a specific sport or bodybuilding, you do not have to precisely track. We're all clear on that. Here are a couple of tracking tips when you go to a restaurant. Look at the restaurant menu ahead of time. I do that all, I do. I, there's not a time I don't go to the restaurant and look. Or like we do wine dinners. So we have like a group of eight couples that we rotate every month. We go to their house for dinner. And I'm probably the biggest pain in the ass, but I'm the one that messages in the group. What are we eating? What are you guys cooking for dinner? And it's supposed to be like a theme and a surprise and blah, blah, blah. And um, we got a message today that it's salmon on Friday night. And I texted Mike on the side and I'm like, I'm not going to be that person, but I'm not eating the salmon. There's too much fat in it. I don't want to eat it. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, well, why don't she, she put in, but I will make chicken breasts if anybody wants it. And I was like, I'm not doing that because every freaking time I'm that person. Somebody made stuff shells and I reply back. I'm like, can you make something else with protein? 
So that being said, I don't eat salmon anyway, but if I were to, knowing that that's what she's cooking, I would put it in my app ahead of time to hold that space today for Friday. But I also messaged her and said, what are your side dishes? So I have an idea. And she said that there was, she was serving appetizers before. And I said, well, what are your appetizers? And here I am texting Michael inside. Okay. So before we go, I'm going to eat a yogurt and I'm going to have a tuna pouch so when we go there, I'll put the salmon on my plate. I'll take a bite of it so I'm not rude. But all I'm going to eat is the vegetables. And he's like, Shannon, no one's going to watch you. Everybody watches me, just so you know. Everybody watches me. Um, but I planned ahead eating somewhere out. To me, that's like eating at a restaurant. I don't really have a choice what I'm eating either. Um, and it's a wine dinner. And I don't drink wine. So people are like, this girl's a pain in the ass. Mike, why are you even with her? But anyway, because they're all wine people. I often wonder that to myself though. Okay. Um, <laughs> bring a food scale. So this is another funny thing. I pretty much got divorced <laughs> because, um, my second marriage, because I, we went to a restaurant in city place and I brought my broccoli in my container. I'm sorry, my Brussels sprouts in a container and I brought a food scale and his name was John. John's like, are you effing kidding me? You're not competing. Why are you bringing this crap with you? He hated it, hated it. Um, but I did bring it with me and people would look at me because the Brussels sprouts smelled so bad because when you put them in a container and then take them with you. Um, and then I pulled out my little scale and I weighed what I was eating. Um, that was kind of like when I was a little bit obsessed uh, in case you didn't, couldn't hear that. Um, but you can do that. But a trick... To not do that is before you go, start thinking about the things you've weighed all week and what it looks like. You should know what six ounces of chicken breast looks like. You should know what six ounces of fish looks like. Also, restaurants know how much they're serving you. I owned a restaurant. If someone walked in and said, how many ounces is your burger? I'm not going to say we have no idea because that's how we make money. We know we're giving you five ounces every time. Because if I give you seven, the restaurant's losing money. So if you need to ask them how many how many ounces of fish am I getting, they're going to tell you it's, a, it's about six ounces. And you can wait to track it knowing that you reserved stuff in your app for that dinner. Or a lot of times I'll go to the bathroom and I'll track it really quick so nobody questions it. But totally you can do that. And you don't have to... Um, be precise about it. Um, depending on what you order, it might have oils and seasonings, not powdered seasonings, but you know, sometimes they put mango salsa on it and all those kinds of things. Um, so I always say, can you put that on the side? I will tell you, if you do this with your food, this is vitamins, but if you do this with food, then this is your dressing and you constantly do this. There's no way to know how much you're eating of that sauce or dressing. Take a spoon, dip it in and put it on your plate. That was one teaspoon. That was one tablespoon. You need another one. Do it again. This whole thing. I see women do it all the time and they're taking like their, their salad and they're like scooping up the dressing. But then they're putting the dressing by the side like they're not eating it. Pour the damn thing on your plate, you know, the whole dressing and account for the three ounces that you're getting of salad dressing or barbecue sauce or whatever it is you're having. I love barbecue sauce. I love, um, you know, ranch dressing, all those things. I just account for it. I use it and then I don't dip. I actually use it. Um, dipping does not work. I'm telling you that right now. You can't, you're going to guesstimate very little compared to what you actually eat. Um, okay. Estimating your intake. So now we're not doing precise anymore. So if you're not on a super strict deadline to your goals, estimating will help you stay out of that all or nothing mindset. And I don't ever want anyone to be in that all or nothing mindset. There's nothing black and white in tracking macros. Um, sizes of fruit changes. You know, you have an apple. This apple's this big. This apple's this big. You're guessing. All right, this is a medium. This is a large. You know, it's not. It's not precise. So you're guessing, even though you're really you think you're not. At some point, you are estimating. 
on a daily basis. Um, so cut yourself, you can cut yourself a little bit more slack by estimating, but I always say estimate higher than what you think. Don't cheat yourself because you'll make up for it at some point, estimating higher. Um, if you estimate higher and then the next day, you might have a little bit more, but because you realize you estimated too high the night, the day before, that's okay because it'll balance out for the week. Because honestly, in the week, you want to lose 3,500 calories to lose one pound. That's that deficit. One pound equals 3,500 calories. Um, again, look at the restaurant menu ahead of time. Think about what you want to eat and play with the numbers. I had somebody met me the other day and they said, you know, I'm going here and I put this in and it's putting me over in fats. So I looked at their law because I can see your food. And I said, well, why not have just a half a serving of the sweet potato and that you could still eat it because they were putting a butter. It was two pats of butter on the sweet potato. That's what they had. And I was like, put one pat of butter and put half the sweet potato. Your carbs will fall in line because she didn't realize her carbs were over. Your carbs will fall in line and your fats will fall in line. You could still have everything you want, just not as much of it. Um, and she did it. It worked. She said it was great. She wasn't hungry. It worked out perfect. And she didn't feel like she was um, restricting herself. Um, so there's the game. Guess how much it weighs? I said that to you. Use your scale at home. It will train you while you are out. And Danielle Novak, who's not on here, um, she is in the Shred Tribe. She's lost a lot of weight. She used to bring her scale everywhere. And her husband told her to stop. And uh, so she doesn't bring it anywhere, anywhere anymore. But she does guess. And she knows what it kind of looks like or, you know, similar. Um, if you have a chicken breast and you have a pork chop, they're kind of the same size kind of thing. You can use that. You can't compare a sirloin to a prime rib. Like there's different meats have more fat. Like ribeye is the fattiest. Prime rib is fat. Um, so you have to think about the meat. So if you know you're going to a steakhouse, put them in your app. Try the different types of meat that you like to eat and see how it fits with your day before you go. Um, when, when you're estimating and you're eating food that you don't regularly eat at home, use a cup and spoon entry. So, um, using, using your hands and stuff. So in your 17 page report that everybody received, you're going to see the page that has the hand on it, the pinky on it, the thumb on it. Those are pretty true to what you're doing. Now you can't use your husband's hand and you can't use somebody else's foot or whatever it is. If they have big hands and feet, you gotta use your own. But like your thumb is one tablespoon, the tip of your finger is one teaspoon. This is a cup. And eventually you'll start to memorize what those are and it will make it so much easier when you're eating out. Um, should I put my tracking away completely for that for that meal? That's the last, that's number three. So is precisely estimating or should I not even bother for that meal? Um, there are times you wanna put your tracker away completely but stay 100% present in what you're doing. So you don't want to be at that wedding at the table with there's like 10 other people and you're like tracking your food. You might not. I would. I don't care what people think about me. Um, but you might not want to do that. I, that's when I go to the bathroom sometimes too if they're talking about me. Um, but if you don't want to, uh, like special occasions, blah, blah, blah. Look at the menu ahead of time. Do you notice there's a theme? Look at the menu ahead of time and track it before you go. Everything you're gonna eat and then don't look at it until you get home. And when you get home, make an adjustment. You know, if you only have eight carbs when you tracked it ahead of time and you go to get that glass of wine, you don't have that in your budget. Don't think it's going to appear there. It's not. What's there is there. Now, if you checked ahead of time that you were going to have a bread, like a roll with dinner, and then you didn't have it, but you want the wine, that's pretty similar. And you should know that by tracking often. Um, or you could put them both in your app ahead of time, know that you're over, and when you go, decide which one you're going to have and then take it out when you get home. But you don't get to go over because you were like, oh, I'm just going to enjoy the moment. Can't do that. Nicole, I love that you just keep laughing because I feel like I'm talking to you. Usually on these meetings, I'll get like eight messages afterwards. Were you talking to me? 
I felt like that was all about me. And I'm like, you know what's so funny? There's 150 people on this app and every single one of you thought I was talking about you. Because I probably at some point am. Um, okay, so here are a, some tips in general when you're going to a restaurant. So ask for what you need. Your restaurant is there for you. If there's only fries that come with that burger, hey, do you guys have any vegetables of the day? Can I substitute that for the fries? They might say yes, but it's a $3 upcharge. Oh, well, it's $3. You're paying how much money for my program? Right? It, $3 is nothing. No one's going to turn around and be like, that's $8 or $10. doesn't happen. Um, if it does, it's usually because it's asparagus. And then I'm always like, I'll just take the broccoli. <laughs> I'm not paying $8 for, for asparagus stocks. Um. You can always say, um, do you have a list of the vegetables or, you know, can I substitute it for a salad? Right. That's always an option. I'm not big on salads because there's not a lot of nutrients in it. Um, I'd rather eat real food. I'm not a rabbit, but that's up to you. A lot of people like to have the salad to start. Don't start with the Caesar salad unless you track what you're putting in there. Caesar has a lot of fat. Um any kind of high fats, high carb sauces, we already talked about this. You're going to ask for them to put it on the side. Uh, when logging ahead of time, estimate your portion size is bigger than what you would normally put. Break meals down into their parts. I tell everybody this all the time. If you're having fajitas, you cannot log chicken fajitas. You have to log three ounces of peppers, two ounces of onions, because you have no idea who put that entry in there and what they put in their fajita. Same thing with the cheeseburger. Same thing with grilled cheese. You can't choose the grilled cheese. You don't know what kind of cheese is on that in the My Fitness Pal entry or in my apps entry. You have to do it individually. If you eat a bowl A, do not choose the Chinese bowl. I don't even know what there is one. But you want to log each individual thing and build your bowl. Moe's. Chipotle's, any of those, you can't choose an entry. You have to log it individually. And that's the easiest way to stay on track. Um, so break your meals down. Always use cooked entries, not raw when you are eating out. I always use them at home too. I always measure my food, weigh my food cooked. It's just so much easier. Um, take a picture of the plate you're eating and estimate it later. When you get home, if you're in app tracking, you can um, meal journal. So you could take a picture of your plate. A few of you do that. Some some of your meals you do it. Some of your meals you don't. I like to see what you're eating. I'm like, oh, she tracked her. But Lauren does that. I've seen you take pictures of your food because um, she does in app tracking. Um, and I like that because it's like, oh, OK, that's cool. It's very holistic. I like to see the proteins, the carbs, the fats. Um, but she also tracks it. It's not just the meal picture journaling, but that will help you. If you don't know what to put in, you can always send it to me and say, hey, this is what I ate. How should I do this? I'll be more than happy to help you with that. Um, restaurants have food apps. Use them. If you're ordering exactly what's on the menu and you're not making any changes to it. And um, I just lost my train of thought, but I was going to tell you something. Take a picture, use restaurants. Oh, how about the food, the menus that have the actual calories on the menu? That makes me so mad. You look at it and you're like, oh, I'm before you get there, I'm going to have the blah, 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 blah. And then you get there and you're like, oh, it's 1,470 calories. I might as well just have the mac and cheese for 790, right? But it's good because it's teaching you that what you think, like salads are like double the calories because of all the crap they put in it. Versus having a burger. Um, Bonefish Grill does that. I don't know if anybody eats there, but like on the way there, I'm like, I think I'm going to get the Imperial Cod. And then I get there and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want the Imperial Cod. I want this instead. It's like stuffed flounder because it has less than what the Imperial Cod has, which blows my mind. Um, okay. Um, so ordering in a Mexican restaurant and I have five minutes before I get cut off. So this might have to be a part two meeting, but ordering in a restaurant um, appetizers like tuna tacos are great instead of uh, guac and chips. Ceviche is great as an appetizer if you like ceviche. 
Um, they're full of protein, low in fat. Uh, if you want to en enjoy some chips and dip, put it on a small plate and do not go back into the basket and track it. That's hard to do, right? I did it. I was sitting next to Cheryl at a restaurant on Saturday and it's like, boop, boop, boop. I have a hard time with that, 100%. Um, but yeah, you got it. You just put it on your plate. Done. Um, so Fresca, Chalupa, Chimanga, all those stuff is usually higher in fat. I'm going to put this all like in a little cheat sheet for you guys, I think, because it's a lot of information to retain. Um, char grilled, baked, steamed, and roasted are your best bets anywhere you eat. Um, Think about the meat you're choosing when you're going to restaurants. Like we talked about it for a steak restaurant, but like carne asada is usually marinated and then grilled if you're at a Mexican restaurant. Um, barbacoa, beef, lamb, meat, it's usually cooked slowly. It's usually served shredded. Uh, it usually has a marinade that is has fat. So you have to remember that. And carbs because of sugar. Um, carnita is usually pork. Um, and so... Know what you're going to eat when you're going to this restaurant, right? I always get chicken no matter where I go. So it won't matter. It doesn't matter to me. But if you like those chorizos and all those things, then definitely know what you're going to get before you go there. Always order the dressings on the side. Um, oh, you can add protein to any salad. Double protein to any salad would work as well. Um, I always get double protein when I go to um, like Bole because they don't, they only give you four ounces and I don't go without six to eight ounces at any meal to make sure I get all my proteins in. Um, if you're going to a sushi place, usually edamame um, will give you the fiber and it'll give you a little bit like 11 grams of protein. Just watch your salt. If you have it on Sunday, don't freak out on Monday. If the scale went up, it's water retention. There's, it's impossible to gain pounds overnight. Impossible. It's impossible. Scientifically, impossible to gain a pound overnight. That's not just water retention or stress. Um, cucumber salad and seaweeds are great at sushi restaurants. Uh, miso soup is good, but keep in mind, it does have carbs when you order miso soup. Um, order your rolls, like hand rolls. You don't have to choose brown rice or over uh, white rice when you go to a sushi restaurant. You can order the rice that you like to eat. Um, yes to grilled. Someone said, oh, I want to go to Sato's. They were talking about the uh, orange theory the other day. And like, but I can't go there. I, I've told you guys a story. I'm the biggest pain in the ass. I sit down at the hibachi and I say, I have an allergy. Can you please make sure that you don't cook my food with everybody else's? I don't want the butter and I don't want anything but broccoli. And can I get double broccoli, please? And then may I get a, brown, a bowl of brown rice? Every time. Mike's daughters cringe when we go to Sato's because I do it every time. And when I started doing it, the girls were like, does Shannon really have an allergy? And I don't, but I say that because there's like eight other people that don't know you sitting across the table and they're gonna be like, oh my God, this girl's such a pain in the ass. I get that a lot. Um, but yeah, you can totally do that and they'll do it separately for you. And they'll spray it with Pam instead of all that lard that they put on there. You know, that's that pure lard. Just in case you're going to say those, I totally ruined it for you, right? There is a cheat sheet that is in the app. So um, please, please, please look at the cheat sheets for sushi, for all the restaurants that are in there. Um, when you're ordering pizza and pasta, make sure you ask for maybe cauliflower pizza. Um, there's always options. Opt for thin crust. Don't get the Sicilian. Although that's really good pizza, Sicilian. But you don't want to do that. Choose toppings like chicken and shrimp. Um, you can choose, even choose ham if you like ham. Load up on the vegetables on your pizzas. That will help fill you up so you're not eating a ton of pizza. Stay away from meats like pepperoni, salami, and sausage. They're all processed. Processed food's not great, um, especially because they're going to be high in salt, high in fats, for sure, because it's processed. They have to preserve it somehow. Um, 